So how do you make out with the lab? The easiest way to get the time is probably to record it on the phone, upload it to YouTube, play it back in slow motion. Measuring the radius, if your hand is over the 50 centimeter mark, and now you know the weights went over the end of the meter stick, then the radius is 0.5 meters. Did you draw a free body diagram? You know mg goes down, the string produces the tension, and that's it. Those are the only two forces acting on the object. Now ask yourself, does the weight rise? Does it fall? No, it doesn't. So that means something's got to stop mg from going down. It's going to be the y component of the tension in the string. And of course, that leaves us with an x component of the tension in the string. Look where that's pointing. Yeah, that's what's producing the fc. So we've got that figured out now. And lastly, we can measure the tension in the string with the spring scale, but that meant grabbing it at the very end, and that's where we get a lot of error. Well, let's remember the goal now, to test Fc equals mv squared over r. One thing we could do is measure that velocity, we have the radius, we can measure the mass, and we can calculate the Fc. And then we know that's equal to the x component of the tension in the string. Well, that can tell us what this is mathematically if we know the angle in here. Then if we know what this is, we can compare it to what the spring scale reads. So remember the goal. It's the test FC equals mv squared over r. First thing I did was I watched the video in slow motion on YouTube and measured the velocity. That's going to be 2 pi r times the number of turns divided by the total time. I watched it for three turns and got 4.025 seconds. I did do it in slow motion, that's the actual time. And I got 2.342 meters per second. I put the bottle on the scale, I got 301 grams. Using the formula, I got Fc to be 3.301 newtons, and that's also the x component of the tension of the rope. How can we take this x component and get the tension? Looking at the diagram. We have similar triangles here, with the distances, we can say that the tension is to L as Tx is to R. Now, if you don't want to do similar triangles, you can use trigonometry and get that angle. You'll get 51.4 degrees. Do the same trigonometry with this diagram, and you'll get tension. You'll get the same answer if you use the similar triangles. Rolling all the numbers and we get 4.225 newtons for the tension. And that's theoretical because we used the formula we're trying to test. So in theory, that's what it should read. Well, when I grabbed the spring scale at the end of the video, it read 3.6 newtons. That's the experimental value. That's what the spring scale actually read. So how do we do? Well, the experimental turns out to be about 15% lower than the theoretical. Not bad, but like I said, I'm sure it was in the grab. How about a check for our answer? If the weight doesn't fall or rise, the tension in the y direction has to equal mg. If the weight's 2.95 newtons, mg, y component of the tension has to be 2.95 newtons. And from those distances, we know that's 51.4 degrees. Well, we can say the tension in the rope is equal to tension in the y direction divided by cosine theta. Run on the numbers. Well, just based on the geometry, I should be getting 4.73 newtons on that spring scale. Yeah, I'd say I had a pretty bad grab. Something else we can do is to test the formula at extremes. What if the velocity was zero? What would the diagram look like? We wouldn't be swinging it around at all. It would just be dangling vertically. Mg would be stopped by the tension, which would now be pulling straight up. There'd be no x component. If there's no velocity, there's no centripetal force. There'd be no need for an x component. So yeah, that would work. Velocity is zero, Fc is zero. Another possibility is to make the velocity bigger and bigger. In a lab experiment, we don't expect it to get to infinity. We just say that it's gonna go faster and faster. So what would the diagram look like? Well, mg hasn't changed, and you would still need a y component in the tension to stop the mg, but you know the string is gonna be coming more horizontal the tension will have to become enormous to generate a y component with an angle like this. 
the Y component's not getting bigger, it's the X component that's getting bigger to produce the larger FC. Why a larger FC? Well, if the V gets big, the squared will be even bigger. And yeah, that's gonna get very large. Now, doesn't that idea bring us back to the beginning of our first lab? We said we were gonna swing the ball around in a horizontal circle. Well, we did, but the string was not exactly horizontal. There actually was a little bit of a sag and we ignored it. If the sag is not very great, then the length of this string here, which we measured against the meter stick, is about the same length as R on this diagram. You can see that we have to have a sag so we can generate a Y component from this tension in the string, just like we have in this diagram here. But if the angle is pretty small, then we'll just say the tension is equal to the FC. That's what we can do in that first layer. It doesn't really work so easily in a conical pendulum because the tension is pulling at an angle that's a lot steeper here. And we can see that the X component is nowhere near close to the tension in the string. So if we're going slow to medium, yeah, you have a conical pendulum. And if we're going fast, it's like the first lab. We'll just assume that the radius is equal to the length of the string. Let's practice all this with a problem. We have a car going into a left-hand turn, 3D perspective. From my rear view mirror, I'm hanging a mass. As the car goes to the left, the ball on the bottom wants to go straight. It has inertia and wants to keep going in this direction, but the car is moving away from it to the left. This causes the ball to swing out to the right relative to the mirror. We can measure the angle of deflection. So if we measure theta and r, can you find v? Pause the video now. Try to solve the problem yourself. All right, what's the first thing we're going to do? Free body diagram. You know there's got to be something holding up that weight. The tension in the y direction is equal to mg. There's the tension whose x component produces the fc. Remember, do not just write fc there. And we'll put the angle here where it belongs. Now, can you imagine this component being up here? That would be opposite over adjacent equals tangent theta. Hey, great. What's fc? It's mv squared over r. By golly, the masses cancel. It won't matter how heavy your fuzzy dice are that are hanging from the rear view mirror. That means V squared over R, which is the centripetal acceleration, is equal to G tan theta. The units work out. That's acceleration. That's acceleration. This has no units. Well, there we have it. The formula for the velocity when you measure the angle from your fuzzy dice hanging off the rear view mirror. Now, I know everybody wants to memorize that formula and use it on the test, but believe me, there'll be questions to find out if you understand what's going on here. And just a quick comment on testing at extremes. What would this be like if the velocity was zero and these would be just hanging straight down? What if the velocity was really fast? That angle would be big. And I think you can get this from experience. Careful driving out there. Don't try this. 